This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin just keeps winning. One of the ways that Bitcoin keeps winning is it takes former enemies and converts them into allies. So, for example, Wells Fargo for many years banned its customers from buying Bitcoin. If you had a Wells Fargo Visa or a debit or a credit card or a bank account, you could not use that money, send it to an exchange to buy Bitcoin. Even the uh, former CEO of Wells Fargo called Bitcoin a pyramid scheme uh, without, of course, being able to explain how a completely decentralized protocol was somehow a Ponzi or a pyramid. Of course, he ended up getting fired. Uh, Wells Fargo was scamming all their customers by opening up new accounts, which they never requested. At the same time, continuing to tell people that Bitcoin was too risky for those same clients that were being scammed. All of a sudden now, uh, Wells Fargo has turned around and they now have started a Bitcoin fund. Uh, this is just going to be for their high net worth clients to start out with, but you can imagine it, it will eventually be opened up to everyone. So here is a perfect example of a bank that was very much against Bitcoin and is now actually going and propping up the Bitcoin market by buying Bitcoin for their clients. Another really notable purchase in the last few days was Morgan Stanley buying an enormous amount of Bitcoin in the form of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, $250 million worth of, of uh, GBTC. Now, GBTC is still trading at a discount to its, uh, its uh, net asset value. And it's been trading at a discount really since, uh, call it March or early April. There's no reason now that this this uh, discount should resolve itself. Uh, the uh, the uh, GBTC charges a 2% annual management fee. And so if you hold it for a few years, you can see how you might uh, want to instead ask for a discount on the price. If you hold this for um, for five for five years, for example, a 2% management fee, that's a 10% loss that you're taking. And one of the ways markets deal with this in closed-end funds is, is by pricing them before below NAV. Now, I'd much rather, personally, much rather own BTC, Bitcoin itself, hold your own private keys, not pay a management fee. But this is still significant because GBTC needs to hold Bitcoin in order to make purchases like this happen. So it's still buying pressure on the overall system. Interesting metric that I just came across today called the uh, Bitcoin HODLer net position change. And what this does is it looks at old Bitcoin holders, Bitcoin OGs, and looks at what they're doing on a monthly basis, whether they're moving coins, in other words, selling them, moving them to exchanges to sell, or just, uh, just HODLing. And we can see here that in spite of Bitcoin's big run up from 28,000, that the HODLer net position change is still positive. Uh, they are either accumulating or holding, and they're not selling. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is making its way into American uh, American politics. Here's a Missouri mayor, the mayor of Cool, cool Valley in Missouri, um, Jason Stewart, wants to give each of his 1,500 residents, so it's a fairly small town, uh, a, a $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. And the only the only rule involved would be that you, if you receive this Bitcoin, you can't sell it for a certain number of years still to be decided. But I think this is a great way of getting Bitcoin out uh, and uh, dis you know distributing it to people. If we had every mayor in America doing this, that would really uh, be a great gift. And it looks like most of this Bitcoin is not going to come from taxes. It's actually going to come from private donations by Bitcoiners. So something to think of if you're interested in spreading a little Bitcoin around your town. If you have enough Bitcoin, you could talk to your mayor and think of doing something similar to this. Meanwhile, only nine more days until El Salvador becomes the first country to adopt the XRP standard. No, I'm actually the no, it's not the Ethereum standard. It's actually the Bitcoin standard. El Salvador has nothing to do, of course, with XRP, Ethereum, Cardano any of these companies that pretend to be helping out developing nations. El Salvador is actually going to a Bitcoin standard. Very important uh, to remember. Meanwhile, the overall value of Bitcoin at this point is now twice the value of the gold, if that gold is in fact there, and no one really knows, uh, the gold that's sitting in Fort Knox. 
the uh, the amount of gold in Fort Knox is about at the current market prices is worth about 470 billion. Bitcoin is worth closer to one trillion. Meanwhile, the Bitcoin chart continues to look great. The death cross that everyone was so worried about really turned out to be a contrarian signal right here where the 50-day moving average crossed below the 200-day moving average. Bitcoin now trading above the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. And everything's on track for a golden cross and Bitcoin really to resume its bull market in the coming months. I'm still calling for $200,000 by the end of the year. And this seems like a very long distance away from current prices. But what people really fail to understand is that Bitcoin can easily, as we've seen over the past few weeks, Bitcoin can easily move 20, 30, 40 percent in just a matter of weeks. And this has a compounding effect. If you do it off of higher numbers, you get even higher numbers. So $200,000 Bitcoin is really much closer than a lot of people understand. Meanwhile, Pierre Rochard had a great idea for plugging the gap in the infrastructure bill if it actually ends up passing the House once it once the House reconvenes. Basically, they tried to, uh, we've talked a lot about the cryptocurrency provision that they put in there where they wanted, they tried to raise an extra $28 billion in taxes by making uh, groups like full nodes and Bitcoin miners uh, somehow issue a 1099 to uh, the people whose transactions they are dealing with. Of course, this is impossible. It's not really going to raise uh, raised uh, revenues, raised tax revenues. Instead, it's just going to possibly drive Bitcoin buy, Bitcoin miners out of the U.S. But this was the the um, Congress or the Senate basically said we can raise an extra twenty eight billion dollars doing this. One solution that Pierre Rochard has is you scratch that out of the bill, and instead, all the U.S. government needs to do to come up with an extra twenty eight billion to um, to help to uh, fund the spending in the infrastructure bill is just to hodl the 69,370 Bitcoin that the IRS seized on November 3rd, 2020. It looks like these have not been auctioned off yet, currently worth about $3 billion uh, as of a couple weeks ago, so, so worth a little bit more now, maybe 4 or $5 billion. And if the IRS were just to hodl this for 10 years, it looks like Pierre Rochard is using a price target of 446879 for uh, in 10 years from now, which I think is is way too bearish. I think we easily hit this in the first in the in the next few years. And that in 10 years from now, Bitcoin is actually trading in the millions of dollars. But even if we take a conservative estimate like this, which is what a government should do, be fairly conservative, at four hundred forty six thousand dollars per Bitcoin, and you have sixty nine thousand of them, you come up with thirty one billion dollars. That would plug the twenty eight billion dollar hole in the infrastructure bill without needing to raise taxes or tax any participants in the cryptocurrency or Bitcoin industry. So I think it's a very clever proposal. Instead of constantly auctioning off the the Bitcoin that the government seizes, U.S. government should really uh, hodl, become a hodler. Also, the Fed. If I were if I were running the Fed, I'd crank up those money printers and buy up every last Bitcoin in existence. This is the real way that the U.S. can beat Russia and China is by becoming the biggest hodler in the world. Some countries going to do it. And I would like to see it be the U.S. that does it. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.